Hello, in this instalment of GDB Watchpoint, we're going to look at pretty printers. So we all have reasonably complex structures and classes in our projects and GDB does its best to display what they are, but of course it doesn't have the contextual information. And if you have more than a handful of members and particularly when you have unions, uh, it can get a bit messy. So let's take as an example to follow on from our previous instalment, let's look at the SIG Info T, which is a structure defined uh, on Linux, which has some unions and generally is a bit messy when when GDB tries to display it. So I'm going to use the example that we were working with um, on our signals um, episode just now. Uh, in the previous one, there we go. So um, uh, let's compile that. I'm going to use dash GZ actually. I always use G3 now, which is better, but dash GZ then compresses the debug info. Um, and uh, that could be quite useful if you're worried about the size, although of course it does add time to the compilation stage. Um, and that's it. Right, so compile that, run it in GDB. Um, so start, and I'm going to just next through to the point where we are uh, there, control C to send the signal. So um, now if I look at my info structure, actually it's the same, of course, as doing, should be the same as that. Um, and it isn't. Ah, yes, of course, it isn't because, silly me, as explained last time, GDB did not see that SIGINT because it was in SIG wait info. Anyway, so let's have a look. So again, print info, so it's a structure, bunch of members, bunch of unions, all a bit messy. So I'm going to make a pretty printer for it. Uh, so um, we're going to do this just by um, a small amount of, uh, we're going to just write some Python for this. So um, I'm going to call this uh, pretty print .py, if I've got that right. Um, and I need to, uh, so it works by this, the, the GDB module has this uh, list of pretty printers, to which we append, and they are, um, you just append a function. Now I'm not going to try and be super clever and do it with a lambda because this isn't a Python, um, expert Python thing. So let's just do it with a, a regular function. So my pretty function. Now that takes a value, which is, a, which is the GDB value type that is exported to Python, which you can look at various things on. So typically what we'll do um, is, is look on based on the type. And if the type is a sig info t, which of course is the same, I'll go back to my GDB, you know the what is command, right? So what is info tells me, yeah, it's a sig info t. So if type is a sig info t, uh, then we, um, Need, then we can return a pretty printer object and a pretty printer object. Let's make a sig info. I'm going to call it sig info printer. So now I need to define one of those. The pretty printer object is just simply a Python object which has a two string function on it, which will uh, return the. Uh, uh, if I got that right, yeah, which will return the. Uh, um, uh, the, the, the text that we want to print. So I just need to got this uh, the constructor um, and uh, that takes uh, so dot val equals val right so you get this val the, the GDB value type object which is passed into the constructor I'm just going to stash that away in the object so that then I can define my to string command um, and and now I can start to sort of interrogate that so let's so the signal uh, signal is uh, so uh, self dot val that's the value that we Attached. And that's just a dictionary that we can look up the various members. So if we look on this, so the sign, let's just look at the signal here, right? So we're going to take the SI signal out to so that member of that structure. Um, and let's just do simple now. I'm going to, I'm going to um, return uh, the string of that. Okay. So now when I source, what did I call that? Uh, pretty print .py. So when I source pretty print hi type now when I print info hey all right so that's perhaps a little bit easier to read although perhaps I've gone too far um, I actually have here um, let's have a look if I, I've got a, a file uh, that I've already com that this is quite useful sig names which you can just translate a signal number to a textual name so I can use that so perhaps I'll go return as a sig uh, name equals um, uh, 
so we go sig names sig no. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's see how that goes. So I need going to source my sig names as well. So we've got that. And now resource uh, pretty print and print info and oh it doesn't like the value oh yes because it's an object silly it's an object not a uh, so why don't I make that int like that cool uh, so I need to say um, something like um, plus uh, sig name source that and print that cool okay that's starting to look a little bit better um, now I want to start to look at the um, the, the code so we are talked about with more information that you can get out um, so what about if somebody's often it's useful if somebody's um, sent delivered a signal to know who delivered that signal right what what process did so let's um, I can do that by something like so the sender is the self Val, if I can look up this uh, 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 SI fields, which is the thing we were looking at before, and that itself is a union. So now I can start to look at uh, uh, the kill member of that union, and um, I can look at the SI peer. So that is the stats can look up the sender of, uh, of that signal, um, uh, but it only. Uh, only if the code is zero, which is the, which is the code for SI kill. So um, so if uh, int um, so if my code so let what I'm doing like this. I'm going to go code equals uh, int self val SI code. We're going to extract the code from it, and um, and now I'm going to say. Um, what about uh, code equals plus code like that? Um, but what I want to say is if code equals zero, which is the code to say it's a kill that's coming from somewhere else, um, now I'm going to actually say something a bit different. I want to say go return, I'm going to use um, formatting here, so I'm going to print the uh, signal number and name like I did before. No, hang on, let's do it. Let's, let's try to be different. So I do the same, but I'm also going to print the sender. Um, so I'm going to go sender equals, and uh, that is uh, this uh, sender object. So, so I think that will do what I want, right? So code zero is going to tell us what the sender was, otherwise, it'll just tell us what the code was. So source pretty. Hi, and now if I print info, I'm going to do this. I get to code one two eight. So that's not that's because I did a control C right, which sent from the kernel. But let's um, let's let's start the program again. Okay, waiting. Um, now it's waiting. Uh, and if I come out of here, I can, so pid or dot out. Hopefully, there's only one of them. There is. So kill dash two. Four and two. So uh, rather than do Control C, I'm going to send a sig, going to send a sig in like that. Um, and so, sure enough, it's now received it. And now print info. And it tells me that the sender is that PID, which ought to be two six nine four eight. Excellent. All right. So there we are. Nice little pretty printer. Um, uh, you can obviously imagine how you can extrapolate that to print whatever structures you want. Um, and and um, uh, it can make your um, just really. I, I find it can really improve the flow state of your debugging, and um, uh, you know a little bit of investment of time up front, and you can be then much more productive. Right, that's it. Thank you for listening. Do um, do follow us uh, and, and to get these updates hot off the press as they come out, um, and look forward to continuing next time. Bye bye.